In this second video uh, on static keywords, what we're going to do is we will take the snippet of code we had from the first video and we'll compile and run it and hopefully this will give us a better understanding of the two uses of the static keyword. So I'm going to do it right here. I'm going to create a main file and the first thing I do is I include the standard IO library and then to start off with we're not going to have any static keywords in our file just to see normal behavior and then we'll see how the static keywords affect our program. So I'm just going to write it out without any static keyword. So we have a local variable y here and then what we're doing is we're printing out its value and then incrementing it by one. Then main will come in here and call that function three times. So print num three times and then we'll return zero for main. Now what do we expect here? Since uh, y is not declared a static, what will happen is that it will always be initialized to zero every time you call main, every time you call print num. So you're going to call it the first time, y will be initialized to zero, then you'll print out its value incremented by one, but then since it's a, an automatic variable, it will be, just be discarded after this call. The next caller will come in, do ex the exact same thing, print out zero, incremented by one, and then discard the value. So we expect three zeros. Let's see if this is indeed what we get. Let's compile main.c and then run it. Yes, we get zero, zero, zero. So now what we're going to do is we will define y as being static. So now y is going to be statically allocated in the data segment of the process. And so it's going to retain its value across the calls. And like we said last time, we expect 0, 1, 2, because the first time we're going to be initializing y to 0, printing it out, and then incrementing it by 1. Then the next time, we'll go directly to printing out the value. It's going to be 1, then we increment it by 1, we're going to get 2. And then the third time we call it again, we get 2. So let's see if this is indeed what we get compiling it and then 0, 1, 2 as expected. So this is the first meaning or the first usage of the static keyword inside a function. Now let's look at the second usage. So what we're going to do is we will explore what the static keyword does to a global variable and what it does to a function. So currently what we have is that the global variable right here is accessible from many external file because it's not statically defined. So we're not limiting the scope of this global variable to only this file because we don't have a static keyword. So let's see if we could actually access it from outside from another file. So what I'm going to call what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another file called caller.c and what this one is going to do is let me just add this library and what it's going to do is it's going to declare y as an int and we use extern here meaning that it's being externally defined. X is externally defined, we're not defining here, we're just declaring it for the compiler so that it knows that there is this X variable being defined somewhere else. So what we're going to do is all we're doing here is we're just going to print out the value of this global variable X. So let's see if this actually works out, so print F and let's say global variable x is equal to I'm going to put x right here and then I'm going to have main call caller so I'm just going to declare caller right here or add the function prototype of caller and then we don't need these print nums anymore we'll have main call caller uh, so this will call it. So what we expect here is that when main will start, it'll call caller. Caller will simply print out the value of x. So let's give x a value right here. Give it x, a 10, sorry. So x is initialized to 10, and we'll see how caller could actually access x and print out its value. So let's compile and link these two files. And then let's see if we actually get 10. There you go. So global variable x is equal to 10. This is being printed out by caller who is accessing the global variable uh, x. So now let's add the static keyword and let's see what happens. Now when I add the static keyword, I'm li limiting the scope of that variable to only this file. So no other file could access this variable. And let's see if this is indeed the case. So 
I will do the same compilation and linkage, and I expect an error. There you go. So the linker is returning an exit status of one, and it's saying undefined reference to X. And this is true because X now X's scope or visibility is limited to main. Caller cannot see it anymore. But once you remove static, you'll be able to use it. So now let's do the same thing with print num. So let's go to caller, and what we're going to do in caller now is uh, we don't need this x anymore. I will call uh, print num. So that's why I called it caller because caller is going to call print num, which is a globally accessible function. So I just need to declare it here. I'm not defining uh, print num. I'm only declaring it for the compiler to know how to use it. So print num doesn't take uh, doesn't return anything and it doesn't take any arguments. And so what we're going to do is we're going to call print num, and uh, that's it. We'll see if that actually works. Currently, print num is globally accessible, so this should work. See, it prints out zero. So if caller was to call print num multiple times, like main did, then we expect zero, one, two, since if you look in print num, we are still using a static local variable. So let's see if this is indeed the case. 0, 1, 2, indeed. So now let us modify this function and declare it as being static. So I'm going to put the static right here and watch what's going to happen. I will compile it and link it and I'll get an error. So it's telling you, so the linker is returning exit status 1 undefined reference to print num. We used it three times. So this is how we use the static keyword to limit the scope of a global variable or a function.